Welcome back everybody. In this video we are going to start to look at some MATLAB programming and these videos we're, these are not going to be you know an exhaustive tutorial of MATLAB. No. Instead we're going to take what you know the, the general topics we learned from Python and we're going to apply them to this new programming language MATLAB. Uh, th those general topics are universal to any programming language. Every programming language has data types, functions, if statements, loops. So we're going to see that here and we're going to just try to make that leap now from Python to MATLAB and try to do it a little bit more efficiently, a little bit more quickly than we did with Python. Let's get started. When I open up MATLAB, I've got this thing here. And yours might look a little bit different, all right? But uh, I'm working off of uh, 2018, so yours, yours might look different depending on what uh, version you have. Now, you'll notice a lot of things are similar to what we were doing with Python. We have the current working directory up here. That's my desktop. We have the current folder. So this is showing you everything that's in your current working directory. We have uh, the workspace, and these are where the variables are going to be located at. And then we have the command window, or the console. That's where we're going to type type in commands and look at their output. All right. Well, let's uh, take a look, and we're, get, we're going to look at an assignment statement. Assignment statement will, of course, look like this. How about uh, my variable, maybe? Whatever. My variable equals, and then maybe we'll let it be the number two something. Now I am going to terminate this command with a semicolon and when I hit enter you'll see of course my variable is in is in the workspace right the variable explorer if you will and it's got a value two and now I can look at that variable by just typing my variable again and leaving off the semicolon like this and uh, so you'll see that the semicolon is what we would say is suppressing the echo. If you leave the semicolon semicolon off, then your commands will be echoed back to you. So, for example, if I if I redid this command, my variable equals two, and I did not put a semicolon there after the line, then it gets echoed back to me. It says my variable is equal to two. Again, if I if I put the semicolon there, then that does not echo back to me and everything is kept nice and tidy that the command still goes through okay the command is still you know the, my variable is still in memory it's just that we don't see it going through so sometimes we want to see it most times I don't think we do want to see it all right if we want to operate on this thing like if we wanted to maybe raise it to a power we're going to use the dot caret operator like this dot caret so if I wanted to take my variable, which is currently storing two, and maybe I wanted to raise it to the fifth power, I would do this. And if I want to see the result, I'm going to leave the semicolon off, and it tells me answer is equal to 32. So two to the fifth is 32. Now this is key here. This is this is important. It says uh, because because I didn't define this or I didn't assign it to a variable it assigned it to the default variable ANS, which stands for answer. So now you'll see in the workspace answer is 32. So I can actually operate on that. Answer like, like how about times two? So I'll say dot star answer times two is 64. And so now that that's the new answer is 64. If you don't want to use the default variable ANS, uh, and in fact, if you plan on operating on these things, you just you just assign them to whatever variable you want. Like you just pick a variable spam equals you know ANS dot times two, and now it'll be 128. All right, so I don't actually use the ANS default. If I want a variable, I'm going to save it. I'm going to assign the calculation to some variable name spam, for example. Now you'll notice that I'm, I'm when I multiply I use dot star when I took the power I use dot caret all right the dot is playing a critical role here and I'll say more about the dot in the next video but when you when you use operations like multiply divide and raise to power you want the divide you want the dot excuse me so if I wanted to do uh, like uh, spam divided by two I'm just going to say spam dot divide by two like that, and that gives me 64. 
Um, you should also know, of course, we can add and subtract, and MATLAB will follow the uh, order of operations. So if I said spam equals, and maybe I did something like uh, 3 plus 4 divided by 2 times 5 minus 2, let's say, we get 11. So what happened here was that uh, it did the 4 divided by 2 first, which is 2, then it multiplied by 5, which is 10, then it did 3 plus 10 is 13, and then minus 2 is 11. Same as your order of operations, and uh, remember that that's PEMDAS, and the uh, comment here is, uh, is the percent sign. So if I wanted to write a comment, I could write it like this, PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, addition, subtraction. And then one last thing, if I want to clear all this business in the console or the command window, I would type CLC. CLC d does it. I think that stands for clear command window. Like CL is clear and then C is command window. If I wanted to clear the workspace or the, you know, the, all of the variables from memory, then I use the word clear. And you see they're gone there. All right, so in the next video, we're going to take a look at uh, some more uh, operations that we can use in MATLAB. And we're going to particularly look at how we can store multiple uh, numbers, you know, a data set, for example, in what's called an numer numerical array. So I'll see you in that video. Thank you.